The Straw King, Chapter 17 The lion and his beasts arrived in the Emerald City earlier the next morning. Lulu was dressed in her battle outfit, and the winged monkeys flew overhead in tight formation. Lulu brandished her pistol, firing shots into the air as she approached the palace as if she was itch issuing a challenge, but there was no one to meet her other than the scarecrow and Glinda. She peered behind them suspiciously as the other monkeys settled on the ground, folding their wings and looking around them curiously. "'It's fine. We've defeated Ginger,' the Scarecrow said. "'She and all her soldiers are gone.' "'We?' Lulu barked, poking him in the chest. "'You mean to say you had something to do with this?' She looked at him with new, grudging respect. "'Not bad for a ba ball of straw,' she admitted. She stared at Glinda. "'Who's this frilly hussy?' Glinda's smile was frosty. "'I am Glinda the Good Witch,' she said. Glinda's just a legend, Lulu sniffed, but she shook Glinda's hand. You're very young, Glinda said sweetly. Anyway, we have better news than Ginger's defeat, she added serendipitously, wiping the hand Lulu had touched on her dress. The true Queen of Oz has returned from her long sojourn in the North, and she will be crowned in a few days' time. Ozma, Princess of Oz, is among us once more. Several of the beasts gasped in surprise and one of the monkeys flew several inches into the air. "'Ozma is here?' Lulu said, her eyes wide. "'Little baby Ozma?' "'Not such a baby any more,' the scarecrow told her. Lulu shook her head. "'She can't see me,' she wailed, unexpectedly bursting into tears. "'She'll never forgive me from what I did, never!' The scarecrow glanced at Glinda, but she clearly had no idea what Lulu was talking about either. "'I don't know what you mean,' the scarecrow said." The lion and all the beasts were leaning in with their ears pricked up. Lulu wiped her eyes, and all her bravado was gone. "'I stole her,' Lulu said dully. "'Oh, that's not how he put it, but that's what I did. I stole her from her rightful place and raised her up ignorant, and then I left her all alone.' Lulu sobbed incoherently. "'I... I do anything to see her except face the past. I can't forgive myself from what I did either. I'm not r ready. Maybe soon, but now I just can't. Tell her... The little monkey choked up. No, don't tell her anything at all, she managed. Don't even tell her I was here. Capiche? But you'll miss the coronation, the scarecrow said, utterly confused. The scarecrow shook her head. Lulu shook her head. Not a problem, she said gruffly, clearing her throat and blowing her nose noisily. It does my heart good to know she's back where she should be. That's all I need. She glanced back at the beast. What are you looking at? She snapped. Immediately, the lion busied himself with washing behind his ears. Lulu flapped her wings, raising awkwardly off the ground. I wish I could have seen her, she said sadly. Let's get out of here, fellas. The rest of the winged monkeys took off after her. None of them said goodbye. Glinda watched the monkeys fly away, her expression thoughtful. Enough of this sitting around, the lion said. What did you say? Who did you say was in charge now? Is there going to be a feast? Glinda blinked. A feast, yes, she exclaimed. A feast to celebrate the return of the and coronation of our true queen. Come inside, all of you, and make yourselves at home. Is that the lion I see? I know that mane anywhere, someone shouted from the courtyard. Tin, the scarecrow exclaimed. Their old friend was just approaching with a small delegation of winkies, who milled around him and chattered excitedly. Scare ran up to the woodman and shook his hand enthusiastically. A moment later, the lion kicked them both over with the enthusiasm of his greeting. Tin, he roared, clapping them both on the back with his enormous paws. Long time no see. For a moment, Scare banished all thoughts of Glinda, Ozma, and the events of the day, and delighted in being reunited with his two friends. The days until Ozma's coronation passed quickly. Glinda kept the princess tucked away in her chambers, and she had little contact with the guests who steamed into the Emerald City. Eager to catch the sight of their new rightful queen, the scarecrow tried to see her several times, but each time he knocked, Glinda came came to the door and told them the princess was resting. He was suspicious, but he could wait until the coronation to find out what Glinda was up to. Instead, he and the lion caught up with Tin, who was envious of all the excitement they'd been having. Battles? Tin exclaimed wistfully. I've never seen a battle. You're not missing anything, the scarecrow told him. It was awful, really. He still, had stopped, still hadn't stopped thinking about the image of the royal army's body trampled in the dirt. 
No, he could do without another battle, even if the rest of his life was as dull as a munchkin wedding. What about your gift? The lion asked, changing the subject. My heart, you mean? La Tin thumped his chest. Right as rain, I'm sure of it. The wizard knew his stuff. What about you? Oh, I'm very brave, the lion said. But he didn't sound so sure. The scarecrow wondered if something had happened during the battle with Ginger that caused the lion to doubt himself. But he put the thought out of, out of his mind. His gift was certainly working, and that's all that mattered. At last, it was time for Ozma's coronation. The scarecrow carefully washed his cloth body, and the woodman polished his tin, plating in a blinding glow. Even the lion brushed his luxurious coat and permitted the woodman to tie a ribbon in his thick mane. They took their place among the other guests in the throne room of the Emerald Palace. It had been decorated beautifully for the occasion. Richly embroidered tapestries hung on the walls. The huge throne that dominated one end of the room had been studded with so many emeralds that it turned the light in the entire room green. Glittering pink streamers fluttered from the ceiling. Glinda's touch, no doubt. A long red carpet stretched from the throne to the doors at the far end of the room. Everyone was craning their necks and looking around them, trying to get a glimpse of the mysterious princess. Cornelius raised a trumpet to his lips and blew a dignified march. The throne room doors opened slowly off their own accord, revealing Ozma, with Glinda standing beside her. Everyone in the throne room gasped. Ozma was magnificent. Her long black hair hung in heavy ringlets to her waist. Her deep green dress studded with more emeralds brought out the extraordinary luminous green in her eyes. Her beautiful wings fluttered behind her, glowing with a soft green light. Even Glinda, decked to the nines in an enormous tiered pink ball gown, her hair piled on top of her head in intricate knots, paled beside the princess. And from the expression on her face, she both knew it and wasn't happy about it. Glinda carried a delicate wrought gold crown on the green satin pillow. Oz was spelled out in beautiful golden script. Cornelius set down his trumpet. We welcome Ozma, the one true queen of Oz, he sh shouted. As Ozma took the first step onto the red carpet, the entire room erupted into spontaneous cheers. One sobbing winky clenched another, wailing. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful in your white life? Wolves howled, crocodiles clacked their teeth together, and a fox ran halfway up one wall in excitement before falling back to the ground. The lion roared in approval, and the woodman joyfully clanged his chest with one tin fist. Winkies threw fistfuls of glitter, and the scraps the patchwork girl cartwheeled around the room. Even Polychrome, daughter of the rainbow, had come all the way from Rainbow Falls, dressed in a swirling and transparent ball gown of rainbow-flecked mist. The tin woodman stared at her civet figure so intently that the scarecrow had to knock him on the side of his head. Step by step, Ozma crossed the room, pushing almost every few, pausing almost every few feet to hug a munchkin or kiss the top of a furry head. Even the scarecrow had moved and found himself grateful he had to he had no tear ducts which with which to weep. Only Glinda, he noticed, looked less than rapturous. At last, Ozma reached the throne, and she turned her face to her new subjects. It took a long time for cheering to die down, but finally the room was silent. "'My dear friends,' Ozma began, "'I am so happy to be back among you in the city where I belong. I promise to serve you well as your queen, and to be just and fair.' She paused for a moment, seeming almost uncertain. uncertain. She might look very every inch the queen, but it was still clear that she was just a young girl. I promise to be the best queen I can, she said finally. Glinda, seeing Ozma, that Ozma's speech was done, stepped forward with the crown and set it delicately on Ozma's head. Once again, the room burst into excited shouts and applause. Glitter confetti exploded from the ceiling, and huge mirrored balls descended from the rafters and turned slowly overhead. Trays of canapes and glasses of fizz, fizz giggle floated through the crowd, carried by invisible hands. Ozians rushed the throne days, hugging their new queen and congratulating her. The lion stood up with, on his hind legs and snatched an entire tray of bacon-wrapped shrimps out of the air, crunching it down in a few gulps. I love parties, he said, through a mouthful of food. The scarecrow, for once not irritated by his friend, had bad manners, laughed out loud. It was impossible to be angry or upset in an occasion like this. Everyone around him was overjoyed at the prospect of a new queen, and such a pretty one, too. Even he was excited, though he did feel a slight pang of loss as he watched Ozma settle on the throne that had so recently been his. 
The celebration went on late into the night. The fizzy giggle never stopped flowing, and by midnight several Winkies were snoring loudly in the corners of the throne room. The lion was dancing the limbo with an extremely tipsy pixie. The woodman was trying to talk to him about timber management, and finally the scarecrow excused himself to get some fresh air. The palace gardens were cruel and quiet. Crickets chirped contently in the grass. The scarecrow settled himself against a tree with a sigh, stretching his arms over his head. In the distance, he could see the hedge maze that had nearly had to hide him during the battle with Ginger. Maybe now he was clever enough to solve it. The thought was so delightful, he took two steps in its direction before he was interrupted. Oh, I thought you'd never leave, said a familiar sweet voice behind him. We have much to discuss.